everyone! In today's video, I'm going to simplify the tone curve in Lightroom, show you how it works, and show you how you can use it to edit your own photos. So you can find the tone curve under the develop module in Lightroom. And it is just here, this little box is our turn curve and it's just under all the main uh, sliders that Lightroom has to edit your photos. So something I get asked quite often is that sometimes when you open up the turn curve, it can look like this, where you can't really move the points around properly. So in order to be able to get the turn curve that we'll be using in today's tutorial, all you need to do is click on this little icon, which will allow you to place points and move them around freely in your curve. So looking at the turn curve, it may look pretty daunting and you may not know where to start when it comes to editing with it. So I have a really simple way that I like to look at this that will really help you understand where to put your points and how to move them around. So just to break down this box for you, down here in the bottom left hand corner we have our blacks, up here in this next section is our shadows, right here in the middle are the midtones of our photo, up here in the top we have the whites and in the top right hand corner we have the highlights of our photo. So these are very similar to the sliders that we have in our basics panel but they do affect your images in a different way. So I'll just show you a quick example with the highlights. The highlights with the slider really targets the more overexposed areas of an image and it's a lot more specific in what it alters. Whereas if you use the highlights in the tone curve, it affects the overall image instead. Um, so they definitely are two very different things. So to show you a dramatic example of how this works, so you can really see how the curve affects an image, we'll start with our blacks down here. If you were to pull the blacks up, as you can see, it'll start brightening up all the darkest parts of the image and eventually your entire photo will be white. The same goes if you pull the blacks to the right, it will start deepening all the blacks in the photo until your entire image is black. And then we'll do the same thing with our highlights. If you move your highlights to the left, it will start brightening the brightest parts of the image until the entire photo is white. And same goes if you start bringing it down, it'll darken your image until it's black. So a really simple way to remember how the movement of the points affects your photo is that if you pull anything on the curve upwards, it will make it brighter. And if you pull anything on the curves down, it will make it darker. So that's a very basic explanation of how it works and now I'm going to show you how you can actually use this to be able to edit your photos. So one of the main things that you can do with the tone curve is to add contrast to your photo. And a really simple way that I like to do this is I start by putting down three points in the curve, just like that. So we have the blacks point is already down for us, then we've added a shadows point, a midtones point and a whites point. In order to add contrast to your photo, you want to create an S-curve with these points. So something that I like to do is to pull the shadows down to kind of deepen the darker parts of the image. I then bring the midpoint up and I like to bring the highlights up as well. And that'll add quite a lot of contrast to our image. So our curve looks very subtle, but I'll show you a before and after of what it's looking like so far. This is the before and this is the after. So even though these are very subtle points, very subtle movements, it has made a dramatic difference to our photo. Aside from just adding contrast, you can also add a little bit of a creative style to your tone editing. Something that's very popular to do is called matting the blacks, which gives your photo a film-like look, which is quite popular on Instagram. So in order to be able to do that, you just want to go down to your black point and pull it up right across the side of the tone curve. And as you see, it changes the blacks to a more kind of gray color and gives your image a more stylized look. You can also do the same with the whites. If you bring the white point down for the highlights, sorry, it does matte the highlights as well and kind of adds to that feeling. Aside from just making tonal adjustments to your photo, you can also use the tone curve to add colors and create a more cinematic look, or you can also color correct with the tone curve. And all you have to do to do that is change your channel and you can create a new curve with the red, green, or blue channel. So just to give you a quick overview of what each of those do, we're going to start with the red channel 
And if you pull the red channel up, it adds more reds to your photo. And if you pull it down, it adds more blues. Then moving on to the green channel, if you pull it up, it adds more greens to your photo. If you pull it down, it adds more reds. And in the blue channel, if you pull your curve up, it adds more blues to your overall image. And if you pull it down, it adds more yellows and greens. So this is a very basic way of editing the color channels. And we'll go into a little bit more detail in a second. However, you can just add a very simple one point in your curve and pull it down. So for example, doing that to this image adds a really nice golden green tone to the overall photo, which I really like. So you can keep it very simple. For this tutorial, I really want to show you how to add a little bit more of a cinematic look to your photos by using just the blue channel. So the color channels work in the same way as the tone channel does. The point down here in the bottom left hand corner with the blues will add more blues to specifically the shadows of the photo. If you wanted to add more blues to just the highlights, then you would focus on the top half of the curve. So for this cinematic look, I really want to add some blues to the shadows and we're going to go quite dramatic on this. As you can see, it's like very, very blue. And then since this is a portrait, I want to give a little bit more life to the skin tone. So I'm going to pull down on the blue curve in the shadows slash mid tones area of our curve. So I'm going to pull that down and if you watch the model skin tone, it'll start to get a lot more golden and have a lot more life to it. And just a very simple curve like that adds a really nice cinematic effect to your photo. So I'll show you a before and after of what that looks like. This is the before and this is the after, which is both the tone curve and the blue channel curve as well. So there is basically an endless amount that you can do with the tone curve. You can use each of these to all work together to edit your photo in any particular way that you really want. The combinations are honestly endless and it's really fun to play around and experiment with the tone curve. I would definitely recommend with um, this tutorial to go ahead and start playing with the curve, put some points down, see how it affects your images, see how each of the color channels can work with each other or not work with each other in order to edit a photo. A couple of tips that I have for you to keep in mind when you are experimenting with the tone curve is that small changes really make a big difference in your photo. So you don't need to have an exaggerated tone curve in order to be able to see it in your image. As I showed you guys right here, you can have the smallest amount of changes in your curve and it will make a very big difference in your photo. And the last tip I have for you is to try and keep your curve looking as smooth as possible. If you start having little jagged um, like movements in your curve, as you can see, it starts looking very processed and very unnatural. Could be the style that you're going for, but for a natural edit, I would recommend to keep the curve looking as smooth as you possibly can. Please let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions and if you want me to make a more detailed tutorial on the color channels of the tone curve, I feel like that's a very big topic that could be its completely own video. But otherwise, I really hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so I will see you all next time. Bye!